What's going on everyone? It's Adrian from Draft Time and welcome to another NBA FanDuel Picks video. Now in this video, I'm going to go over the main FanDuel slate for tonight, which is uh, it's December 22nd and we have a nice little six game slate. And for me personally, I love six game slates. I feel like it's right there at that sweet spot to where, you know, the slate's not big enough to where there's so many players and so many games you need to research, but it, it's not it's not so small that, you know, all the guys are, are going to be very heavily owned. So for me, it's right there in the sweet spot, which is why I love six game slates. But anyways, uh, before I get into the slate for tonight, I want to go over last night. This was pretty much the main FanDuel lineup. Finished uh, 1,122nd place out of 19,841 lineups. So it did pretty well, 350.1 total points. And I want to show you guys another lineup that I did. This one finished with 374.7 points. And I actually finished 83rd out of uh, 19,841. And basically all I did with this lineup was uh, I capped off each team, max them out at two players from each team. So the way I did that was I just went over here to rules, maximum of two players from the same team. And that's how I came up with that lineup. But anyways, let's go ahead and let's refresh this and let's take a look at tonight's slate. So there's not much as far as injuries tonight. You got Brandon Podzemski, he's questionable. Malik Monk is questionable. Tari Eason is questionable. Um, so not too many key guys that are questionable, but you know, Brandon Podzemski and Malik Monk, they might open up a few things if they end up missing the game for guys like Andrew Wiggins. Uh, for, for Malik Monk, that'll open up things for like someone like a uh, Kevin Herter. So make sure you pay, pay attention to those two guys. But anyways, let's go ahead and let's take a look at uh, the top value guys for the slate. So let's sort this by value. And right off the bat, you see that the top value guy is going to be Jaden Hardy for the Mavericks. With no Luka, they're also without uh, Dante Exum. And they've been without Kyrie Irving for a while now. So he's pretty much going to be, you know, the guy who's going to create on that team. And he's only $4,900. And we're projecting him to score 36.08 fantasy points, which puts him at a value of 7.36 uh, fantasy points per thousand dollars, which is pretty insane value. Then you got Drew Eubanks. Uh, he's only 4,100 and he's probably going to be getting the start with no Nurkic tonight. So uh, we're projecting him for 26.1 fantasy points, which puts him at 6.37 uh, fantasy points per thousand dollars. And then you got Tim Hardway, you know, for the same reason, no Luca. And you got Jaime Hakes with no Jimmy Butler tonight. He's a pretty good value play. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and go through each game individually. But before I do that, I want to show you my sleeper pick. And that's going to end up being this guy right here, Trace Jackson Davis. Okay, he's 6,100, so he's pretty expensive. But the reason he's 6,100 is because he's coming off of back-to-back 36-plus -back point games. Um, so that's why they raise his price to 6,100. Now, I think that is too expensive for him if Podzemski does, does end up playing. But if Podzemski ends up missing the game, then I really like this guy right here, Trace Jackson Davis, as a sleeper play, sleeper pick because he's still going to be pretty low owned um, at that $6,100 price point. And I also have another sleeper pick, uh, Kyle Lowry for the Heat. And I'll go into that later on in this video when I go through the Heat. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the first game. You got the Raptors at Philly. So Toronto, uh, they're middle of the road defensively. While Philly, they allow the six fewest points per game defensively. And both of them, they play at a pretty average pace. Um, so for the Raptors, it's pretty much business as usual. There's not a whole lot of value here. Uh, no one's really injured. You got Scotty Barnes. Uh, he's $9,400 because he's been balling out. But I think $9,400 is too expensive for him. Now Siakam at $8,200. Um, that's pretty expensive too. But I would consider him for a few lineups. What, what you're going to see is a lot of lineups are going to end up with uh, Kyle Kuzma in it. And it might be worth fading Kuzma for Siakam because Siakam is only $200 more expensive and he can end up easily outscoring uh, Kuzma. So everyone else is pretty ex expensive with the exception of OG Anunoby. He's another guy I may consider at 5,900 because if you look at his minutes, he's getting over, you know, 35 plus minutes per game. And... He's on a pretty bad three game streak, but he's getting the minutes there. So he could easily give you 30 plus and have pretty low ownership. And $5,900 is not is not bad for someone like OG Anunoby. Now let's go ahead and take a look at Philly. Now for me personally, I think everyone's a little bit too expensive on Philly. You know, 
Obviously, you might want to pick up Joel just because he's averaging 72 plus over his last five games and 70 plus over his last 10 games. So, you know, you might have to consider picking up someone like Joel Embiid um, just in case he gives you 70 again. But besides Joel, uh, not really much going here for the rest of these guys. They're a little bit too expensive for me. Now, that takes me to our next game. We got the Nuggets at Brooklyn. Now for Denver, they allow the fourth fewest points per game defensively, while Brooklyn, uh, they're middle of the road defensively. They're a pretty average defensive team. And Denver actually plays at the second slowest pace, um, while Brooklyn plays at the eighth slowest pace. So might end up being a pretty low scoring game. Now for Brooklyn, they allow the fifth fewest points to opposing centers. But with that being said, uh, you know, I don't think Nick, Nick Claxton is gonna give Jokic a whole lot of problems. And if you look at their last game, uh, Jokic ended up scoring 61 against Brooklyn. So I don't really see that being a problem. And at 12,200, he's $700 cheaper than Embiid. And he could easily outscore Embiid. So you might want to consider Joker in a few lineups. I mean, he could easily give you 70 and end up outscoring Joel Embiid. Um, but besides that, I think everyone else is a little bit too expensive for Denver. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at Brooklyn. For Brooklyn, I liked Dinwiddie earlier in the season when he was in the 6,000s, but now he's in the 7,000s, and I think that's a little bit too expensive for him. Uh, Nick Claxton in the 7,000s, that's way too much. Uh, Macau Bridges is not, has not been doing too well lately. Um, he did have that 60-point game against Orlando, but I still think uh, he's trending down, and $7,400 is too expensive for him. But so the only person really worth considering is Cam Thomas. He scored about 30 last game against the Knicks, who are a pretty good defensive team. But the two games before that, you know, 47.3 and then 53 fantasy points. So he might be worth considering at 6,900 um, if he ends up with another 45-plus uh, point game, which he's capable of. But besides him, I don't see anyone else worth picking up on, on Brooklyn. But let's go ahead and take a look at the next game. You got Dallas at Houston. Like I said earlier, no Luka, no Dante Exum, obviously no Kyrie for the Mavericks, but the Rockets are actually a good team defensively. They allow the second fewest points per game and they play at the fifth slowest pace. So they're a pretty good team defensively. But with that being said, uh, there's just too much value to pass up on Dallas with no Luka, no Kyrie, no Exum. Now, as far as Dallas is concerned defensively and pace of play, they're, they're pretty average in both those categories. So with no Luka, Exum or Kyrie, Jaden Hardy is going to end up being probably the guy they lean on for offense. So that's why we haven't projected to score 36.08 points, and he's only $4,900. And we actually have him slightly higher than Tim Hardaway, because the thing is with Tim Hardaway, he's kind of more of a spot-up shooter. And, you know, not having Luka, it doesn't quite impact Tim Hardaway as much as it does a guy like Jaden Hardy. So for the most part, it's going to be a lot of Hardy and a lot of uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. But what I would consider doing is I would consider uh, doing – do some Hardy and some Hardaway, but also some uh, some Hardy and some Derrick Jones, or some Hardy and Grant Williams, maybe even some Hardy and some Powell. So you get you get what I'm going for here. Now for Houston, like I mentioned earlier, Tari Eason is uh, questionable, and he's coming off a pretty big game. Uh, he scored 41.6 points. Uh, if he misses the game, maybe you want to consider consider Dylan Brooks. He's averaging 26.32 over his last five games and he's only $5,200. Now, I would have considered Dylan Brooks if Tari Eason plays the game, but if he misses the game, uh, Brooks is worth consideration. Now, Shangun is a little bit too expensive at 8,400. He doesn't really, he's, he's actually a pretty consistent player. You know, he doesn't really have monster games, but at the same time, he, he's pretty consistent. So he's more of a better cash play, uh, not, not quite as valuable for GPP. Fred Van Vliet, uh, he's gonna end up in some lineups because he's been having a monster stretch here uh 62 71 those were his last two games um so he's gonna end up in some lineups at 8700 dollars jabari smith maybe you want to consider because he had a monster game last game but i'm not gonna go crazy on uh jabari smith and really those are the only guys worth picking up but that takes us to our next game you got atlanta at miami now miami plays at the slowest pace in the nba uh, and they allow the ninth fewest points and on the flip side the Hawks, they play at the fifth fastest pace and they allow the third most points per game. Uh, now for Atlanta, it's pretty much business as usual. For me, Clint and Bogdan Bogdanovich uh, in the 7,000s, that's too expensive for them. I like them better when they were in the 6,000s, but you know, 
in the 7,000s, that's way too expensive. Trey Young, $10,000. You know, you, you always want to consider Trey Young because he's the type of player who could go off. But I'm not going to put him in any lineups. I, I might go full fade on Trey Young tonight because historically, he hasn't done very well against the Heat. Uh, they do a lot of blitzing of Trey Young. I mean, they give him a pretty hard time. But who I would consider is DeJounte Murray. If you look at the last game against the Heat, he scored 45 and a half points. And he's only $7,700. Um, so I'm going to lock in uh, DeJounte Murray into a few lines because what they do is they blitz Trey Young and that opens up things for guys like DeJounte Murray. But besides that, everyone else on the Hawks is too expensive, especially against this defense. Now let's take a look at Miami. And for Miami, you got no Jimmy Butler. So that's going to open up things for someone like Jaime Jaquez uh, at $5,600. Um, he's going to end up getting picked up in a lot of lineups. Caleb Martin, $5,500. Uh, that's a little bit too expensive for him. I don't think he benefits that much from no Jimmy Butler. Bam out of bio, I think will benefit from no Jimmy Butler. They're going to rely on him a lot more for offense. And if you look at his last game, he only played uh, 29 minutes. He was in foul trouble, which is why he only gave you 32.4. So I think he's going to have a better game tonight. And the Hawks actually give up the third most fancy points to opposing center centers. So uh, I expect Bam to have a pretty good game, although I do expect him to be pretty heavily owned. So you might want to consider fading him for some other centers uh, in a few lineups. Now, one guy I would consider kind of as a sleeper pick with no Jimmy Butler, Kyle Lowry. Um, he's coming off an abysmal game against Orlando. Only played 17 minutes, finished with six fantasy points. But I expect him to bounce back, and he's only $4,900. And he's actually had two 40-plus 40, 40 point games this season. And you know, if he scores 36, 37-plus uh, at $4,900, that could be a game changer. So I'm going to lock in Kyle Lowry into a couple of lineups. Okay, now let's take a look at the next game. You got Washington at Golden State. Now, Washington is the worst team in the league defensively. They allow 126.5 points per game, which is, which is uh, awful. Now, they play at the second fastest pace. And the Warriors, actually, they play, play at the 10th fastest pace, and they allow the 10th most points per game. So this actually might end up being uh, a pretty high-scoring game. Now, for Washington, uh, you're going to end up with a lot of Kyle Kuzma with him being $8,000, which is why you might want to consider fading someone like Kuzma for someone like you know Siakam, who is only $200 more, and he could easily outscore Kuzma. Now, you might want to consider uh, Gafford at that center spot. Even though 6,200 is kind of expensive for him, if you take a look at his last three games, he's got two 55 plus point games in his last three games. So you almost have to consider uh, locking him into a couple of lineups. And the same goes to Tyus Jones. Even though he's $6,600, he's averaging almost 40 over his last five games, including that 64 point game against Phoenix. So those are really the only guys I might consider. Maybe some Danny Abdia because he's $5,500 but I'm not gonna go crazy with him. But anyways, let's take a look at Golden State. Now for Golden State, you got Steph Curry at $8,800. He's gonna end up in some lineups uh, and rightfully so. Uh, Chris Paul, $6,800. I'm not crazy about him, but maybe you consider him in a few uh, if Podzemski ends up missing the game. Uh, Clay Thompson, 7,000 is a little bit too expensive for him, even if Podzemski ends up missing the game. but. Guys I would consider with no Podzemski would be Kaminga and Wiggins and this guy right here, Trace Jackson Davis, even though he's 6,100. He would be my sleeper play. And that takes us to the final game of the night. You got Phoenix going up against Sacramento. Now for Phoenix, Phoenix is pretty average when it comes to uh, pace and to uh, points per game allowed. Now Sacramento, they allow the uh, ninth most points per game and they play at the eighth quickest pace. So for Phoenix, you got no Nurkic, um, as I mentioned earlier, which is why Drew Eubanks is uh, projected to score 26.1 fantasy points. Now, the only way I would consider fading Eubanks is if I fade him for Chemezi Metu, uh, who's only $3,900. And the reason I would consider that is because every now and then you got these guys like Eubanks who end up getting the start. and Maybe, maybe they get off to a, a very poor start and they get pulled in the first quarter. So... You know, sometimes that does happen. So maybe you fade Eubanks for uh, Metu in a couple of lineups. But that's really the only Eubanks fade I would consider. Um, now, Duran and Booker, you almost always have to consider those guys because they're always capable of giving you 50-plus. And they're actually both projected to score 50-plus tonight going against Sacramento, who play at that quick pace that I talked about earlier. Um, 
I like only picking up one of them, you know, one or the other, not both. Grayson Allen's too expensive, Eric Gordon's too expensive, uh, Jordan Goodwin uh, too expensive at $4,500. So those are really the only guys I would consider from Phoenix. Now for Sacramento, uh, you always had to consider Fox and Sabonis and they're both under $10,000. And unlike uh, Durant and Booker, and the example I gave you guys the other day was Zion and, um, and Brandon Ingram, uh, De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis, they're not negatively correlated. They're actually positively correlated. And that's because, you know, you got a big and a little, you know, a point guard and essentially a center. So uh, you you could, in fact, end up picking both of them up in the same lineup. Malik Monk is questionable. If he does end up missing the game, uh, you're going to see a lot of Kevin Herter at $4,500. Um, Harrison Barnes at $4,400. Maybe you consider him as a sleeper play with no Malik Monk because he's actually getting pretty big minutes. 30 plus minutes in the last three games. Uh, so maybe you pick him up as a sleeper pick. Keegan Murray, maybe you end up playing as a sleeper pick um, because he's $6,500, so he's going to be pretty low owned. But if you look at uh, three games ago, he dropped 65 points. So maybe with no Malik Monk, you end up with a little bit of Keegan Murray. But besides that, uh, I'm not going crazy on anyone from Sacramento. But anyways, that's all I really have for the slate tonight. Now, before I go, I'm going to go ahead and run the top lineup just to see what it spits out, uh, just to see what we're working with. And we have a total projection, 323.98, which is pretty decent for a six-game slate. And that's because there's a lot of value with no uh, Luka tonight. Now, this is definitely going to change before lock. Uh, you got De'Aaron Fox, Malik Monk, who's questionable, Jaden Hardy, Devin Booker, Tim Hardaway Jr., Jaime Hawkins, Denny Avdia, Kyle Kuzma, and then Drew Eubanks. So anyways, uh, if you guys aren't already subscribed to Draft Time, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. You can sign up for a free seven-day trial. And uh, good luck to everyone tonight.